Well here it is folks, this is the RC plane you've been waiting for. The cheapest and easiest plane you could ever build and it flies really well too. If you want to build it you just need one sheet of A1 foam board, cost you about four or five pounds, a glue gun, you can download my free plans, cut out the foam board, stitch it together with a bit of glue gun and then BR 1806 motor, 5040 prop, 10 amp speed controller, two 3.7 gram servos and a little tiny receiver. I use the FFS2A and you've got yourself a radio control plane. Now you may recognize this as the big brother of my little F16. Now there's a complete build blog for this one, quite detailed, not that there's much to it. You could build it just by looking at the pictures of it. The small one was quite tricky to fly at first. This scaled up version is easier to fly as you will see in the excellent Maiden that's coming up soon. Now made a few changes or improvements here. Everything was exposed on this one and the LiPo went on the top. But on this one I've got LiPo underneath and I'm using some Coca-Cola bottle to make some convenient little covers or containers. I bought a special little slim LiPo for this one which is a 450 milliamp 2S because it will slide nicely in there and puts, gives it the centre of gravity about right. I'll put a link to that. That slides nicely in and the fact it slides means it's going to make it easy to adjust the centre of gravity. So basically as I say all you've got to do is cut this out, glue it together, make a little plywood mount, fit the servos, wiring just goes across here like so and you've got yourself a radio control plane. Oh incidentally just for a bit of protection on this leading edge I added a couple of barbecue sticks across there. As you can see servos are recessed in just like so so that all you see on the top is the actuating lever and of course these operate by what they call flapperons which means you don't have ailerons you've just got two flapperons that either move this way or move that way. So dead simple the small one you can build quite comfortably out of a couple of A2 foam board sheets that will cost you about three or four pounds. If you want to build the bigger one you'll need an A1 foam board sheet but having flown both now I'd say the bigger one is the better option to build but much the same construction as the small one except as you can see I've actually given this one a quicksilver spray coat and I think it looks absolutely great. It needs a few stripes on it because when it's in the sky the silver doesn't show very well. So anyway there it is my own design easy and cheap build F16. If you've got any questions about the build stick them down below but as I said before there is a very detailed build blog of the smaller one and, and I shall put a link to both lots of downloadable plans down in the description. One thing about this design pushers can be pretty tricky to throw you're liable to get your fingers chopped as I know only too well at a cost of chopping off the end of my thumb many years ago with a prop. So the advantage of this is of course you can actually hold it there when you throw so your fingers are not in front of the prop. If you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up helps my algorithms and why not check out some of the other stuff on my channel. But without further ado let's get on and see the excellent but very windy maiden of my big F-16. Right folks we're up here again and there was me celebrating as I came past the wind turbine that there was that it wasn't even moving there was no wind but it's because it's northeasterly and so there is wind and it's time for the maiden of my big version of the F-16 so wish me luck I've given it a bit of reflex because this kind of design does need a fair amount I'm just hoping that's going to be enough but at least we're on the scrub so if it goes in which is quite likely we'll have a soft landing Oh, what a beauty! Don't get too high. Look at that, straight from my hand and it's flying. Now half throttle. needs a bit more than half throttle. I'm 
I'm having to keep the nose down. Glide is well enough. Well, it's quick. Ooh, <laughs> that's what happens if you try and do a, a loop and you're too low. But as I've said before, the thing I like about this gorse is you don't break things when you pile in. Well, that went well for a first attempt, but I'm gonna give it some down trim because it's climbing way too much. Right, so I've given us some down trim. Try again, there is actually a bit more wind than I would have liked. And a couple of times when it got higher there, I was a bit worried I was going to lose it, but wish me luck. Let's see how I go this time. Half throttle again, it's not too bad. And as I said before, one advantage of my design here is you've not got your fingers in front of the prop. So let's go. That's a bit better. That's half throttle, quite manageable. Oh, got caught out there by the downwind turn. Right, well, having established, I still think it needs just a bit more down trim. Having established that it flies okay, I'm going to try, get some height and try a couple of loops and even a roll. Too windy for messing about trying to do stuff like that. Tail heavy. Caught out by the downwind turn there. It's not tail heavy because when I shut the throttle the nose drops so it's not tail heavy. Right we're going to give it one more go. Probably needs even touch more down trim but I'm going to have to mess around at home to do that because it's an elevon mix. But flying pretty well but the wind's even picking up now so as you can see, if I get anything wrong up here, it gets blown back so quickly. But we'll give it one more little go, try and keep it upwind. See that she's actually stopping in the wind at times there, because it's so strong. But I'm quite pleased with that. I think that flies pretty well. I'm still having to keep the nose down. This well, that was full power. What happens if I try? Oh, 
you see how much it's affected by this wind right I think it's too much for this I'm gonna land try and land needs very fine throttle control Well, actually that wasn't a bad landing, was it? Probably still needs a bit more nose weight. Right, I've got some lead in my bag. I'm gonna try it with a bit of lead on the nose. That wind's picking up all the time, unfortunately. Right, well, I don't know if you can see it, but I've added a little bit of lead on the nose, so it definitely nose heavy now. And we will see if that actually has improved the flying, flying characteristics. Where's that wing coming from? Here we go. Get your fingers out of the way of the prop. Everything working? Yep. Well, it is a bit easier to fly now, but I think if anything, it's nose heavy. Probably too much weight on the nose, but it is easier to fly now. Not tending to climb quite so much. Oh, what happened there? That wasn't Elevon control, I think that was loss of signal because, as you saw, it just said no, don't like it. That's a bit worrying. I've got nothing there, battery's gone. It definitely is a loss of signal, look at that. It could be flat battery. Gone completely. Ah, oh, you can see what happened there, why I suddenly lost control. The battery was disconnected there. I don't know whether it disconnected as it went into the ground, but I think it probably disconnected in flight. There's a lesson there too, to make sure this doesn't actually stand a chance of coming apart in flight. Anyway, so there it was, warts and all, the maiden of my scaled up version of my little mini F16 design. So this is the big F16, free downloadable plans, link down below, easy to cut it out, glue it together, you can build yourself a plane there easily in an evening. One lesson I learned, as you saw, was don't have your battery leads exposed to the elements or the gorse, because when I pulled it out, I should have actually checked that it was all properly connected, as well as checking that I had control surfaces working. So to prevent that happening again, I've made a very simple little cover, to prevent these leads being snagged again. Just the question of connect, slide that on and don't know if you can see it, slide on the cover and don't know if you can see it, a rubber band. So that will stop that snagging. I've adjusted the throws a bit and given it a bit more expo. That should make it a little less twitchy. But also somebody commented up at the field that that was a big slot that I'd got there for the prop. And the reason for that was when I scaled up the plans, I also scaled up the slot, but it's the same size prop and the same size motor. So I cut a couple of little foam board inserts and glued those in. So apart from you having to trim it there to suit the motor that you use and the prop, I'd also advise you to cut that according to the size of prop. So that's another little improvement I've made. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a like. It helps my algorithms. And why not check out some of the, some of the other stuff on my channel? 
there's a few foam boardy things but quite a few of those cheap foamy little glider conversions I've made 13 of the big ones and a few of the small ones too including a beautiful little biplane so if you've got time check those out but that's all for now thanks for watching fly safe and hopefully I'll catch you all again soon Thank you.